And now we return to Mr. Wildcat's diaries. Ding, ding. Hi. You don't know me, but would you whine me, die me, and have your way with me? I spent seven thousand dollars to move to Arizona, get away from the women of village. Hi, hey, everybody. Mr. Wildcat is back for another Married Children review, and as you can tell, we're looking at another one of my favorite episodes from season ten. Al goes to the dogs. Okay, a hilarious episode where Al winds up having to build a doghouse for Lucky. All right, but we'll get there in a little bit. Okay. Al Goes to the Dogs is the 21st episode to come out of Season 10, recorded on March 1st, 1996, and original air date March 24th of 1996. I'd like to add that this episode, in, just like many episodes in the later part of Season 10, does not feature Katie Seagal whatsoever, because Katie Seagal is on maternity leave, having giving birth to her second child. In the early year, back when, around in season six of Married Children, Katie Seagal got pregnant with her first kid, who unfortunately, they decided to write the pregnancy into the show, but unfortunately, Katie Seagal wound up having a miscarriage. And after that, Katie Seagal wound up having two kids after that. The first was at the beginning of season nine, and the other one was around this time. And because of the miscarriage that happened early on, she did not want either of her pregnancies written into the show. So they basically had to find a way to get her um, away while, while not showing off her pregnancy. So in this case, she winds up heading out to Europe where she's trying to hunt down her father so that he can come back to Chicago, lure Peg's mother out of the Bundy household, where she has been setting up camp upstairs in Bud's old bedroom throughout the entire 10th season. All right. So basically, um, we start the episode off where um, two nights in a row, basically uh, it's around 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, where we have, a little type of, we have little subtitles on the bottom saying, perfectly calm, no chance of rain or sleet. And of course, B Al winds up carrying. Uh, we Al opens the house. He opens the door where he's coming in from outside, carrying Lucky. And basically, it's rain and, on one night, and it's snow the other. And apparently, Lucky can't hold himself. He gets all over Al, and Al is forced to go take him out, so he can go take his shit all over the yard and basically um, after the first attempt he winds up uh, telling Bud and Kelly that ever since Peggy has left that he's been having to take care of this dog and he is begging for Al he's begging for Bud and Kelly if you want Lucky to stay in the house you guys are going to need to help me take care of him Okay, second time around, they get given a second chance and they blow it. All right, both times we see okay, where's Bud all in all this? On both occasions, Bud is sleeping in his uh, room down in the basement, and he's wearing some crazy, crappy version of Robin. He's called Robin, who is the sidekick for Batman. All right, you know what's coming. The ambiguous of the gay duo. Now that we got that joke out of the way, let's continue. So basically, he's called, he's wearing some crazy uh, costume that resembles Robin from Batman. And then we also see Kelly, who is basically mooching. Uh, she's basically kissing some guy on the patio on both nights. And Al, winds, after he brings Lucky into the house, he opens the door and he winds up catching Kelly k kissing him. And Kelly being scared of what Al was going to do to this to this guy, she winds up not she winds up throwing him off the patio once she gets caught. <laughs> All right. So after the second occasion, uh, Al basically says, "I've given you a second chance. You've blown it. Tomorrow night, Al uh, Lucky sleeps out in the yard. 
Dad, if you're going to put Lucky outside, you have to build him a doghouse. Well, why don't we build one together? It'll be like that perfect family, like the party of five. Dad, their parents were killed in a fiery plane cr in a fiery car crash. Exactly. So the next day, we're out in the yard, and of course, Bud and Kelly are nowhere to be found. But Al is out there building the doghouse, and Jefferson, he pops in for a brief appearance in this episode, and the only one might I add. He checks in to see Al, how, how he's doing, and Al asks Jefferson for some help, which he's willing to do. And then Al, wants, he wanders off, and he basically, he's wandering in his mind about, like, how Al and Jefferson are a dying breed and, uh, like, being helpful and stuff. And then Jefferson's nowhere to be found. So Al winds up basically building the doghouse, and he winds up hit, he winds up peckering himself with a hammer and doing everything else, all right? Meanwhile, in the Bundy household, uh, Kelly is preparing for another date with Carlos, okay? Now, Carlos is a, like, Hispanic guy. He first showed up in Love Conquers Al, the episode where Al and Peg take Peggy's parents out to some marriage retreat, which also features a water park. And they basically, uh, and basically, uh, Kelly is wanting to have sex with Carlos, but instead, Carlos is doing everything else possible. And in fact, the only one in that episode that actually did get any sex was Bud, who wound up, um, ha he wound up ha having so much, he had, he basically gave his soul to Isabella, who was about to enter the covenant. And basically, she lost her virginity to Bud before she it was to become a nun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty screwed up, isn't it? But anyway, Kelly is trying to win over Carlos' attention, and she's basically got herself, herself another date with Carlos. And Carlos is about to come over. So basically, she doesn't know exactly um, what to look like. So she wound up writing to his um, family out in San Diego, where they speak Spanish, instead of Spanish. <laughs> and they basically, uh, she basically asked them to send her pictures of some of the women that, um, how some of the women dress in his native village. And she decides to head off to a beauty salon in order to uh, win her, in order to win Carlos over. Now, of course, she's afraid that she, Carlos is going to show up before she gets back, so she warns, so she winds up telling Bud, if Carlos gets here before I get back, please, whatever you do, keep him away from Dad. Okay? And then, of course, we see Al being chased by a lawnmower, which is riding himself in the backyard. Make way! <laughs> Next scene, we're out in the backyard. Al is basically uh, chopping up, he's basically sawing some wood to uh, build a doghouse. He's minding his own business, of course. And then, of course, Marcy, being the snoopy bitch that she is, she peeps over and decides to get into Al's business. Howdy, neighbor. What you doing? Well, I got a saw, I got some wood, I got a how to build a doghouse manual. I'm masturbating. No, no, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> That's for another episode. <laughs> Al basically says, well, I got some wood. I got I got a saw. I got some wood. I got a how to build a doghouse manual. I'm jet skiing. Well, I'm trying to go over some reports for bank deposits. But, of course, that concept is probably foreign on you, much as wearing a strapless bra on you. Do you suppose you can keep the noise down? Just a hair. Okay. Thanks, Al. Just two hours of quiet. That's all I want. That's all I need. She runs off. And, of course, Al, now being pissed off with Marcy for not being able to keep her nose out of Al's business, he decides to annoy her. Instead of building that doghouse, he grabs that saw and he starts to t he's wanting to taunt Marcy. She can say, what, two hours? <laughs> 
And of course, being too noisy outside, Bud uh, shuts the screen door and he goes to watch television. He's watching the Red Shoe Diaries. And now we return to Red Shoe Diaries. Ding, ding. Hi. You don't know me, but would you why me, die me, and have your way with me? Oh! Ooh, I love to. Yeah, right. I can't count how many times this has happened to me. Ding, ding. There's an actual ring at the doorbell. All right. Now it's some sexy lady in a G Oh my, she's wearing these sex, very sexy outfit. I think she's like a G-string or something. Black leather. Holy shit. She's really someone to peck her off to. <laughs> All right. She doesn't really mention her, her name is not officially mentioned in the episode, but script, but the script as well as um okay the script as well as uh married children phantom site they call her turqu she's called turquoise all right she opens okay, she's uh, basically at the door al op no bud opens hi you don't know me but would you want me die me and have your way with me yeah! Okay. Bud, he looks at the camera. I'm dreaming. Better pinch myself. What, am I kidding? Instead of pinching himself, he decides to make his way with Turquoise. He decides to head out with Turquoise. Just as Bud is about to uh, take off with Turquoise, Carlos shows up. Hi, bud. It's Kelly home. Oh, uh, Carl's not supposed to say something. But before he can say it, Turquoise is trying to seduce Carl's. Hi, you don't know me, but would you? Never mind, never mind. Just go ask my father. And then Bud, he takes off with Turquoise. And I don't believe we ever see Bud again the rest of the episode. All right. So Bud, so now Al is in the backyard. He's uh, got the chance on. Wild thing, you make my heart sing, you make everything groovy, you must be Kelly's father, you must be here to exploit me, lift off me, you must be here to mooch off Kelly, mooch off me like my... <laughs> You must be uh, here for Kelly. Mooch off me like my worthless wife and family. Mr. Bundy, money's no important to me. I come from a very wealthy family. Son. Please, call me Carlos. No, I prefer son. You know anything about building houses? Oh, of course. My, my family built our entire village. In fact... We even build a country. We even build a tunnel from my country to yours. Then you must learn how to use one of these. A saw, of course. Oh, of course. Do you, know to, do you know how to make it go louder? You mean like this? <laughs> Next scene. Carlos is building the doghouse while. Al is still over in the fence with the saw. Hey, Marcy, how's that bank report coming along? What's that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh! What did I ever do to you? <laughs> so, so basically, he's sitting there taunting uh, Marcy. And Marcy comes in with some guy. Marcy surprises him and takes a two by four and plows Al right in his ass. Hey Amber, how about those lumberjacks? What's that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Ah! What the fuck did I ever do to you? You were born and you leave here. I don't know what you did to my birdie bath, but the little birdies won't go there anymore. You started this. 
You came over here and told me to be quiet. What do you expect? <laughs> Don't complain to me. Do what I did and complain to him. This is Inspector Fitzpatrick of the Department of Housing and Zoning. How do you do, Mr. Bundy? Nice doghouse you got there. Why, thank you. Tear it down. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> Inspector Fitzpatrick from the Department of Housing and Zoning has been called in by Marcy to harass the hell out of Al. Since Al um, wouldn't basically leave her alone with that he basically, basically over, they're taunting Marcy with that chainsaw <laughs> she had enough and she called Inspector Fitzpatrick and has paid him a huge amount of money to basically harass the hell out of Al alright so we go to commercial and when we come back what do you mean this doghouse that what do you mean this doghouse has to come down? Me and my son Carl just put it up. You have no permit. It's a doghouse. Oh, you say it's a doghouse. What's to keep you from renting it into a to a family? The fact that it's two feet by two feet. Sorry, Bundy. No permit, no doghouse. No doghouse, no brains. And then Carlos intercepts and says, Perhaps there's something we can do um to resort to re to not have to resort to violence. Oh, you can go down to the um, zoning office and deal with people in eight countries, uh, eighth world countries, carrying sausage in their pockets. Pay you thirty bucks, or for fifty dollars, you can give me the permit. Right, you can give me the money right now, and I'll give you a permit. Car uh, Carlos is basically here to the rescue. So Al turns over to Carlos. Carlos, I'm a little bit short. How much do you need, Mr. Bundy? Carlos picks out a huge wad of cash. All right, he's fucking loaded. All right, um, he's off. He's willing to offer Al some money. Al only needs fifty dollars for the permit, but he asks for seventy. He's gonna pocket twenty for himself. That is, you know how Al's like, right? So basically, um, gives the inspector 50 bucks in an effort to go and get the permit but of course the inspector is doing his job I'm a building inspector I'm inspecting your building uh oh uh oh what this house too close to the main dwelling you're gonna have to tear it down well, what do you mean we have to tear it down why don't we just uh, pick, pick it up and move it over I'm sorry Mr. Bundy but it's illegal to move a unsafe dwelling. Takes a condemned sign out of his clipboard, slaps it on the doghouse. Well, it might be safer with a 50 in your pocket, huh? Carlos, 70? But better make it 80. So Al winds up taking, so Al is given 80 bucks by Carlos, pockets 30 and gives the uh, attempts to give the other 50 to the inspector. Ordinarily, I take your money, but Mrs. Stars has already paid me much more. And, well, call me old-fashioned, but I'm a one-broad kind of guy. Besides, it'd be fun watching you build the, rebuild the doghouse all over again. He sure will! <laughs> of course, and Marcy is sitting there watching from her window. He sure will! <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, don't hold your breath. No, do till you're blue. Because we're not rebuilding this doghouse. Carlos, we're going bowling. Well, I don't know how to bowl. You got money, don't you? That's half the game right there. Mr. Bundy, doesn't your dog have some need some place to go? I don't care where you go. So basically, they're on their way out to go bowling. And of course, he's going to take, he's going to clean Carlos's, he's going to basically gamble with Carlos. Because he, since Carlos does not know how to bowl, he Al decides to take the opportunity to clean and dry with all that cash. And before they even make it into the household, they wind up stepping in, I don't know if it's dog shit or dog piss, inside, right inside the house. <laughs> I don't care where he goes. Damn dog! Damn neighbor! 
Damn, Dan was born. Okay. So the next scene, <laughs> we see the inspector sitting there on a lawn chair, goofing off, while Carlos and Al are sitting there in the process of rebuilding, not only rebuilding the doghouse, but relocating it to another part of the yard where it's a safe distance from the fence. Okay? And of course, Carlos accidentally hits, Al accidentally gets his foot, fingers crushed, uh, put on the final touches. I like to do it! <laughs> Kelly finally comes home, and she's very shocked and very upset that Carlos is out there with Daddy. Carlos, what are you doing here with, with the yard man? No, Kelly, this guy's your father. That's never been proven. Come on, let's go. Why? I'm having a wonderful time here with your father. Carlito, damo este dos por cuatro. <laughs> Which is Spanish for Carlos, give me that two by four. Which Carlos does, and basically she, uh, Kelly's trying to win over Carlos's attention, and of course, not to. Carlos is still not impressed. Like, so Carlos, not anything I look. Like. You still look like the ex excitingly trashy Kelly that I've seen before. Damn. I know I should have got a complete make under. Dad ain't going back to the salon. I need a couple hundred bucks. Oh, no problem, Carlos. Carlos gives. <laughs> Carlos wants a foot in the bill for this one. About a couple hundred. Uh, a couple hundred bucks at the very least. He gives. I don't. Uh, I am pretty sure that Al, knowing what he's like, he's pockets a little bit of money for himself, that is. And he gives uh, the rest to Kelly. All right. So now it's time to have the house reinspected. All right, that I do an inspector. Oh, let's see. It looks like the sea to be the proper distance from the house, but, but what? No foundation. So now they gotta pour. So now they gotta rebuild the whole fucking house with a foundation base. All right. So guess who gets called in? Cement truck. All right, so man truck backs up, and the spout is headed into a wear barrel. And guess how much, okay? All right, boys, all the rip. <laughs> Not even this much concrete splatters into the wheelbarrow. That's it? My future son in to spent $700 for one stinking blob of concrete? Well, I'm sorry, we have one truck minimum. You know where you want to pour the rest? How about the dog? Very funny. Check his sock drawer. Well, it's your cement. When you know where you want the rest of it, give me a call. Now, Al winds up going to the inspector. He's really, he's starting to have enough of them. Now, listen. Before we rebuild this doghouse, get another time. Any more surprises in that magic little code book of yours? Nah, not a thing. <laughs> Flips it around. Uh oh. What? What's wrong now? No plumbing. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and of course, Marcy, having hear this, she pops out the window again and starts laughing it out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> no! Takes the hammer, throws it at Marcy, and breaks the window. <laughs> and the audience goes wild. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> now, why would a dog need plumbing? He doesn't wash himself after he marks a tree. If he's dirty, he just drags himself along the ground. Like I'm going to do to you if you don't prove this fucking dog house. Page 49, Mr. Bundy. No plumbing. No doghouse. <laughs> so they try to... <laughs> Next scene. <laughs> Holy shit. We hear a toilet flush. A little toilet. 
design for our dollhouse is actually been installed is actually seen sticking out of the doghouse <laughs> and the audience is going wild well the pipes are up and running I haven't filled this water bed oh well, let's see okay plumbing passes but where's your handicap access next scene <laughs> A uh, handicap ramp with a wheelchair logo is on there. And over. <laughs> okay, bring on the three legged dogs. Spectre has finally had it. He shuts the book. He shuts his clipboard shut. He knows he's been had. He's been he's been basically trying to harass Al over this doghouse, but unfortunately, Carlos is. Uh, bank account is too big is way too big to let Fitzpatrick win the day he finally caves in and gives out his permit okay then Kelly comes down the stairs well okay bud after six hours of salon, I think I finally got my look. What do you think? Well, now you no longer look like a North American slut. You now look like a South American slut. That's the look. That's exactly the look I've been going for. Carlos comes in the back in the house. Wild thing, you make my heart sing. Hey, excuse me, old housekeeper woman. Have you seen the excitingly trashy Kelly? Carlos. You see, this is Kelly. You just don't recognize her with her clothes right side out. And then Bud takes off for good. So, Carlos, what do you think of my new look? I spent $700 to achieve the look of the women of your village. I spent $7,000 to come to America to get away from the women of the village. Kelly, I've decided. You're not the Agola swear woman. You're not the Agola sweater-wearing, pony-pressing woman who will frost my Duncan Hines cakes while I bear my 2.6 children as I watch wrestling on TV. Carlos, you never wanted those things before. Ah, uh, yes, but I never spent a day with your father before. He's a very wise man. He reeks of wisdom and something else I cannot identify. These are my words, Kelly, for I must take my leave. Adios. No, 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 Carlos. I'm a slut. Huge slut. Al comes in the house. Hello, pumpkin. Daddy, you have ruined my life. Oh, well, that makes us even. Oh, now, come on, cheer up. So you've lost Carlos. Hey, we're going to the basketball game. At least we're going to the basketball game together. Me and your dad? No, me and Carlos. Isn't it amazing how things turned out? I spent $12,000 of Carlos's money on a doghouse that Lucky refused to set foot into. Well, why are you so happy? Because 6000 bucks of it's, because 6000 of that is in my pocket. Hey, I also figured out where to pour the leftover truckload of cement. We're getting a swimming pool? Better. Jefferson, have you seen my car keys? Hey, you in the truck. Get that spell away from my Mercedes. Okay, boys, let her rip. No! <laughs> and Al and Kelly are sitting there laughing. They get the final laugh, and that is the end of the episode. So basically, <laughs> Carlos is turned off by Kelly's desperate attempts to win him over. He does not like what Ke Kelly's wearing or how she looks. And after spending the day with her father, he doesn't. Kelly is not the lady that he will that he wants to be with. So he winds up dumping her. All right. Carlos wind up dropping. Okay, Carlos wind up spending twelve thousand dollars. On the doghouse, while with six thousand bucks of that going right into Al's pocket, 
and they get back at Marcy for all the trouble that she has caused. He decides to get back at her by pouring that truckload of cement all over her Mercedes. Okay? I actually love how they got back at Marcy eventually. All right? So let's take a look at some trivia. Not much to go off of, but uh, some fun things to think about. So the title of this episode is a reference to the saying, goes to the dogs or or is going to the dogs, meaning that something is decreasing in quality. Okay, Like I said before, Katie Seagal did not appear in this episode due to her pregnancy childbirth. All right. Inspector Fitzpatrick is played by Ian Patrick Williams. Okay. He actually appeared on Married Children back in Season 2 in the two-parter Poppies by the Tree, playing Beanie the Cook. That I did not know about until Chris and Luigi uh, reviewed this episode of the Married Children podcast, and that was a fun fact to hear. This episode also marks the second and final appearance of Mark Espinoza as Carlos, Kelly's boyfriend. And out of the two, I believe this was my most favorite episode of Car- to have Carlos in. Okay? To give you an idea a little bit, we, let's go a little bit into uh, Mark Espinoza's career. All right? To give you an idea of what he was like. All right? Now, Married Children was one of his first appearance. He's... He's wound up appearing in a wide variety of um, shows and films, mainly minor characters. But at the time that he did mar- his two episodes of Married Children, his one credit that he was mo- famous for was appearing on the TV show Beverly Hills 90210. So Be- Beverly Hills 90210. Uh, it's an American team drama television series created by Darren Starr and produced by Aaron Spelling, running 10 seasons on Fox from October 4th, 1990 through May 17th, 2000. All right. Uh, he basically appeared in 50 episodes of that show under uh, let's see the character Jesse Vasquez. Okay. Some of the other shows that he has guest appearance on at one point or another in his career. There's a wide variety. I'm not even gonna, I'm not going to go through everything, but I'll go through a little bit of what he has done. He's appeared on and some of it include but not limited to Carolina the City, NYPD Blue, Nip Tuck, Jag, Psych, The Young and the Restless. He did Days of Our Lives. He did NCIS Los Angeles, Scandal, Intelligence, Bold and Beautiful, Secrets and Lies, Criminal Minds, SWAT, and his most, uh, the one thing that he is currently starring in is The End Game, currently airing on NBC. So basically, uh, um, he actually did a permanent role on The End Game, which unfortunately only lasted one season and ten episodes, premiering on February 21st, 2022, and ending on May 2nd. He wound up playing um, FBI Director Rogelio Real. All right. I wish I got to see a little more Carlos, okay, because I really loved him, and this was my most favorite of two appearances, okay? Now, Carlos has the distinction of being one of only three guys that Kelly has dated more than once in different episodes. The others are Vincent Vinny Verducci, which uh, he ba- she basically dated. Um, let's see. We know he was in Top of the Heap, that fucking piece of shit. He was also in Oldies But Youngins. All right. He, let's... T- uh, he also did, let's see, first appearance was Oldies But Youngins. He also did Kelly Goes Hollywood Part 2. 
And he was also in, was that part two? No, it was part one, all right? He was also in that shitty top of the heap uh, pilot that was the biggest waste of our 100th episode. And believe me, that is an episode I do plan on reviewing uh, eventually down the road, so be on the lookout for that, all right? The other character was Genghis, all right? G-E-N-G-H-I-S. Give you an idea of what he was, all right? He appeared on... Th he's appeared in a wide variety of episodes. So basically, he... Um, he has, like, puffy hair with a mustache, okay? He had uh, dated Kelly. First appearance in Naughty But Nice, he climbs up a ladder thinking it's Kelly's room, but it turns out to be Bud's. He also get, dates Kelly in I Want My Psycho Dad's Second Blood Part 2, where he gets, uh, he and Kelly are making out on the couch at the beginning of the second part, and Al winds up throwing him out the door. Final appearance was in Season 10's The Weaker Sex, in which, at the end of the episode, um... Al's trying to win back his manhood. And he basically brings Guinness up in front of the news cameras in his living room. He has Guinness tell Peggy that she's an idiot. And Al winds up punching him in order to win back his manhood. I really do not care for that episode, quite honestly. Alright. And then another uh, thing to... Okay. Another episode that he was a part of, he was in that Season 9 uh, spin-off attempt, Radio Free Tremaine. He's wearing that um, sign that says Legalized Marijuana. And he shans he's the one that sh not only shouts, Attica! Attica! But when Marcy is shouting, Power to the People, he responds, Take off your shirt! Yeah! Okay. We've had enough of him. So Al is also he mentions the series Party of Five and how they were the perfect family before Kelly tells him that the parents on the show died in a fiery car crash, causing him to smile. Party of Five ran on Fox from nineteen ninety four to two thousand focusing on the lives of five children who have to raise themselves and run the family restaurant after their parents are killed by a drunk driver. Okay. The kids, they range anywhere from 24 years old all the way down to just one year old. Okay. When Al sees Bud in his pajamas, he calls him Hef and Boy Wonder, referring to the Playboy magazine founder, Hugh Hefner, and the comic book character Robin from the Batman franchise. All right. Before Bud talks to Turquoise, he is watching Red Shoe Diaries, an erotic drama series that aired on Showtime from 1992 to 1997. Previous Married Children guest stars Matt LeBlanc, Heidi Mark, and Lisa Boyle have appeared on the show. One thing I would like to, I need to mention, of course, all right, and this was mentioned by Luigi on the Married Children podcast when the podcast reviewed this episode, all right. When they, um, when you hear this phrase, you don't know me, but you would you whine me, dime me, and have your way with me, he says that that comes from a very famous line, would you whine me, dime me, and 69 me? 69! That's fuck some whores. <laughs> Sixty-nine. <laughs> All right, that was kind of a little gross, but I'll tell you, those of you who do not understand this, what sixty-nine is, it's a it's a sexual intercourse position where you are your partner's genitals are in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, I have a girl. All right. Okay. 
So basically, if I'm having sex, if I'm having sex with a girl, and I was to do a 69 routine, her vagina would be in my mouth, and my penis would be in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> naughty boy. Yes, I've been a naughty boy. <laughs> but you know what? It had to be said. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I um, I would love to give you guys a demonstration with uh, my rubber woman that I recently got, but it would be it, it would be extremely disturbing. And YouTube, of course, would take me down for uh, X-rated material. So we're not going to get, we're not going to be going there. <laughs> now you see what you made me, now you see what you made me do, Luigi? <laughs> you mentioned it first on the podcast. I'm just <laughs> quoting exactly what you <laughs> had brought up. All right. During his speech to Kelly about why she is not his dream girl, Carlos mentions the br cake brand mix Duncan Hines. All right. You are not the Agola swearing woman, pony pressing woman who will frost my Duncan Hines cakes while bearing my 2.6 children as I watch wrestling on TV. How does he say that with that? Okay. So let's briefly talk about Duncan Hines. So. The founder of Duncan Hines, all right, uh, okay, It was founded by Duncan Hines himself, who was born on March 26, 1880, died March 15, 1959, just shy of his 79th birthday. Uh, basically, he was a uh, he introduced a du the Duncan Hines bread through the Durkee's Baking Company in Homer, New York, um, where principals Michael C. Antil Sr. Albert Durkee and Lena Durkee were bakery proprietors. All right. Hines sold the right to use his name and the title to his book to Roy H. Park in 1953 to form Hines Park Foods, which licensed the name to a number of food-related businesses. The cake mix license was sold to Nebraska Consolidated Mills in Omaha, Nebraska, which developed and sold the first Duncan Hines cake mixes. In 1957, it was sold. Uh, Nebraska Consolidated Mills sold the cake mix business to Procter and Gamble. The company expanded the business to the nation, no market, and added the series to related products. Okay. He appeared on the game show to tell the truth in 1957 to. Uh, basically show uh, his in order to promote his product died of lung cancer just 11 days shy of his 79th birthday uh let's see duncan hines is now owned by conagra brands the current name of the nebraska consolidated mills the former owner of the brand okay it was uh let's see hines is widely honored in his hometown of bowling green and a portion of Route 31 West, north of the city, was named the Duncan Hines Highway after his death. Okay. And enough of Duncan Hines. Okay. Alan briefly sings the opening verse to the 1966 song Wild Thing by the Trogs as he is making noise with his chainsaw in the backyard. Carlos later sings it as he walks inside and sees Kelly with her total make under. Okay. Couple of goofs okay so basically during the scene which al decides to keep lucky outdoors it is in the middle of the winter and you can see the snow covered ground and trees however during the next scene which takes place in the very next day alice showing bill in the doghouse outside with the grass is green the flowers are blooming and there is no snow in sight 
When Jefferson tells Al that he could have bought a pre-made doghouse instead of building himself, Al's left arm is slightly bent as he leans onto the workbench, and Jefferson is holding the beer in his right hand. Camera then switches angles as Al jokes about not having sex with his wife, and his left arm appears to be straightened as he leans away from the workbench, while Jefferson suddenly has the beer in his other hand. When Al tells Carlos to give him the two by four in Spanish, Carlito, damo este dos por cuatro. The este in the subtitle means this. All right. He should have used ese, ese, which is Spanish for that. Okay. Al refers to Kelly as little, little pumquito, but pumquito is already in. Demitive form, meaning Al is essentially calling her Little Lil Pumpkin. Also, it should be Pumpkita, as he is referring to a female. In Season 9, Episode 23, Episode User Friendly, it is established that not only did Buck have a doghouse, but the switch under the counter controlled its electricity, so they shouldn't need another one. Now, of course, one thing I do want to mention is that when Al, when Buck passed away in Rec Room for a Briard at the beginning of Season 10, Al did mention that he was going to chop off Buck's doghouse for firewood. Okay? Again, much against uh, Kelly's wishes. Okay? So now let's take a look at my review for this episode, okay? Of course, this is one of my favorite episodes of, uh, of the entire 10th season. I loved Carlos in this episode. Marcy played a wonderful role. Uh, Inspector Fitzpatrick, all right? This guy that appeared, in, like, between him and uh, his appearance in Poppies by the Tree, I like his appearance in this episode much better. I also love the fact that... Um, we want, let's see, we get some Spanish, we get, okay, he peels up a big wad of cash, okay? A lot of this does come to, a lot of this stuff in this episode brings to mind of an everyday life in the retail uh, sector here uh, where I work, all right? So basically, you have people that speak Spanish, of course, my Spanish is not perfect, but I do have this uh, co-worker, her name is Erica, she basically does a very, she had done a good job to, to help me uh, do a little bit of, um, learning a little bit of Spanish every now and then. Unfortunately, uh, her and I, we now work in different departments and her and I rarely see each other any, anymore. But um, every time we do see, she um, does help me with um, Spanish and stuff. Carlos pulls out that big wad of cash, all right? It reminds me of some of these uh, Mexican customers that come into my store. Uh, there's a couple of people. There's uh, a couple of Mexicans that do come to mind. They wind up going through the register with pallets of dog food, pallets of Coca -Cola, soda cans. All right. Uh, they wind up going through it like 15, 20 shopping carts. Filled with potato chips, all right? You're probably wondering, what the hell are they doing with all this shit? Well, where I am, we're only about an hour from Mexico. And what they do a lot, you have people that will come up from Mexico. Like, you have the dog food, you have the chips, you have the soda, you have Capri Sun, you have Vienna sausage. The most uh, frequent items, but there's other items that they'll add to the stuff as well. What they will do is they will they'll rank up about five thousand dollars plus worth of merchandise per visit and they're in, the, in there about at least two times a week. And what they'll do is they will take the stuff down to Mexico and they'll resell it down there. Alright? A standard bag of Lay's potato chips, for example, okay? Uh, you will find it in Sam's Club for about three dollars Usually about three dollars and fifty cents, about three fifty four bucks, something around there. Okay, the same bag of chips will sell in Mexico for about nine to ten dollars a bag. All right, and when you sell enough of them, that's where your profit's going. All right, now of course the dog food they've been stopping 
they ha haven't been allowed to buy the dog the pallets of dog food for a while because we've been having a hard time keeping that that's some, that's something that uh, retail industry as a whole has been having a hard time keeping in stock on the shelves and they've had to put a li certain area businesses have had to put limits of how much dog food you can buy per day okay so they haven't been able to buy they have not been able to buy the dog food that they've been wanting to buy but they've been buying everything else and of course it sometimes does piss off a lot of the it does piss off some of the other customers who are in here trying to buy merchandise and they basically say and they can they find it hard to believe like that they can't get the merchandise because the Mexicans are coming over to the America to the states and they're hoarding everything they're buying up baskets and baskets full of this stuff just to take it back to the other side of the border for a profit all right so that kind of reminds me of that a lot of Mexicans of course they don't carry they don't have a debit card or credit card because they don't have a okay they don't have like they don't have a bank account all right they're afraid by having a bank account the government will trace them down and they'll become targets for deportation okay so they carry cash to make the to make to help make things on trade these purchases untraceable okay and then uh, aside from the EBT cards which are issued on the American side but that's a story for another day okay so like so the speaking the Spanish the big wad of cash um, the Spanish speaking culture a lot of that does come into mind of what it's like to work a, a typical day of work in the retail industry in southern Arizona okay and it does remind me of a lot of uh, this episode does remind me of a lot of that and you add that to all the wonderful acting in this episode okay the one downside for this episode and of course the Mary Children podcast has already mentioned this but basically the probably the one downside was the fact that Kitty Seagal was not in this episode but of course it is a factor that's not that's uncontrollable okay and uh, for that Okay, and despite the fact that it's out of her control, uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, Peggy um, have at least one appearance in this episode whatsoever. And it, then it just did not seem completely whole, but everything else is perfect. So for this episode, Al Goes to the Dogs, I am going to give it a four and a half out of five. All right. That's how much I love the episode. That's all we have for today, and I invite you guys to join me next for another Married Children review coming down the road. There will be a, a few other reviews, non-Married Children related, that will also be on there as well. If there's a particular episode of Married Children you would like me to review, please leave the suggestions in the comment section below. Please keep your comments in the boundary of good taste. Don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any further reviews. And until the next time we meet, Mr. Wildcat is reminding you to be good, be careful, and behave. Or as what Erica would say, be good, be good, be good. Of course, I wasn't good in this episode, but you know what? I'll try to be good from now on. <laughs> okay, boys, let her rip.